Hello and welcome guys, Asi Shim in the hangar. Today I will be showing you everything about the Runcam Eagle 2. I mean, not everything because there is already a terrible lot of reviews out there. Josh Bartwell, Painless360 and many of my fellow reviewer buddies already took a look at the Runcam 2. It's really a nice cam. It's an awesome performer of course. The main feature of this thing here is they brought down the latency. So that was the main concern for the Eagle 1 was the latency it was a bit high, like in the 40, 40 plus milliseconds and this is way down. How much is it down? We will take a look at it with the oscilloscope method. If you didn't see my latency test video, uh, check back in my video history, it's two or three weeks ago. Basically I just use an oscilloscope to measure both to see the video out of this cam and uh, a PAL frame has a certain characteristical line and if it's all dark it's a low curve and if it's all bright it's a high curve. So you see drastic changes in the image you see even in the, in the power line so to say. Now I just probe the 12 volts starting here and stopping and the effect it has on the camera. So this is a more accurate measurement than seeing it on the screen or, or, or filming a phone in, in high frame rate because the phone has latency, the screen and so forth. So if you need a better explanation, check out my video. Hi guys, you see me here in the video. So of course the video quality is awesome. I have it on the bigger screen here. I mean the light handling and everything is really astounding. And as I said in my test setup, it's just this LED light. I put it under a box here, block most light. And once I switch I have a really drastic change in video image quality. And this drastic change I can measure. Then it will do a single measurement as soon as my yellow line, this is the switch here, as the yellow line jumps up. So I switch and it did a measurement. What this tells us now is that at this time frame here the voltage of my switch and of the LED jumped up from 0 to 12 volts. And the red thing we see in the background is the video image from the cam out. So this is a normal uh, quite dark frame with some spikes. One frame should be around 20 milliseconds. With PAL video standard you have 20 milliseconds per frame. Really it doesn't make much more sense to have a higher latency than 20 milliseconds because you will get a new frame only every 20 milliseconds. So but what we did measure here is the time it takes until the frame goes completely bright which is this here. So of course I can repeat this single measurements a numerous time and I will hit a random time frame within one of these PAL frames. So my accuracy level is around 20 millisecond accurate and you see now almost at the half of this palm frame I switched on and the next frame already was completely bright so we can now move the slider here and measure from switching on to this frame it only took 13 milliseconds we have around 50 milliseconds of latency, I would say. I never see more than two frames missing from switching to being bright. So that's a good thing. So let's just remember this image, compare it to another cam. So there you go, this is the Eagle One. It's in 16 by 9 aspect ratio. Good thing is it uses the same connector. Although the connector layout is a bit different, the, the joystick, uh, the OSD joystick is only two wires now instead of five wires which or six wires which is awesome because it's more standard now. So same setup, moved everything in my little magic box here, have the switch ready, doing a single measurement, yeah and it's apparent here what was the problem with the first Eagle? I switched on in this power frame, then it took a whole second 
PAL frame and only the third PAL frame was changing light. So if we move over here, we could say that the minimum latency here was like 13 milliseconds. And I mean it really doesn't matter if you have 5 millisecond or 10 millisecond because you're in the accuracy level of the PAL frames. But in this case here you would lose minimum 20 milliseconds of your flying. And this, if you're flying fast, this can be a few meters. So you're losing one PAL frame. That's, that's the short saying of this here. Let's just do a few more. See if we can hit an extreme. Oh, it's not so bad here. I almost found the start of a pound frame and the level goes up here at the 25 million seconds mark. Yeah, but it's apparent that no matter what you do, you will lose one frame. Now here it's a more extreme situation, we're losing one and a half PAL frames because I switched in the middle of this and we lose this and here it goes brighter. So really I think the first Runcam Eagle was around the 25 milliseconds mark which sounds really low but yeah, just the other tests were not that accurate and the newer one is around the 50 millisecond mark. I really did a lot of latency measurements late and I, I made an overview of all the cams I had to test. So you might want to check this out, I put the link in the description. I compiled an excellent sheet for you with the screenshots of the latency tests. The cam is only one part and the other parts do latency as well. The latency of the video system is negligible. And I had to zoom in to 500 nanoseconds to see the two curves be delayed. So the actual delay is 500 nanoseconds. So it doesn't matter if we have a, a wireless transmitter here or if we have a, a direct cable line. And I hooked up the um, Swift Mini now to the same test. We can take a look at the image quality here as well. I mean the Swift Mini isn't bad either. But while flying and switching between the Swift Mini and the Eagle 2, you will see this video now, uh, I felt like a good quality difference between this and the Eagle 2. Something you notice here in this dark image now is that the low light capabilities of the Swift Mini, the Runcam Mini, are not that good like the Eagle. It has good contrast but not so good light handling or wide dynamic range. Yeah, here's a good example where I hit the end of a pile frame and right next to it the next pile frame already is changed. So you have really low latency on these CCD ones here. So there will be no chance that you miss a whole PAL frame because of the cam's latency. So here in theory we're down to 5 milliseconds of latency. Circumstance you will lose a whole PAL frame. That's the thing I can tell you about latency. Okay, before it gets too boring, kind of my my summit to this to this cams. The Eagle one already was awesome. I mean, I didn't use it a lot because it was uh, my sample was in 16x9 and 16x9 is good for planes maybe, but not for multicopters because multicopters you have this up tilt and you need a lot of vertical field of view and you don't have it with 16x9. With the Eagle 2 uh, latency shouldn't be an issue. I'm not nearly fast enough to judge this like a pro, but I felt no problem with the latency here. But I can also fly with the latency of the split and the split's latency is maybe a bit higher. The image on the Aussie just looks a bit different here because I have a lot of OSD text and this makes it bright, those are those lines. But you see this is one frame, the second frame and the third frame is different. 
What we have here, uh, by the way, is NTSC, which is not 20 milliseconds, but it's only like 17 milliseconds. But you see the latency of the split might be a bummer for the really fast guys because you lose, you basically lose two NTSC frames until the light change occurs. I can show you a few of the switches measured now. Now, now we're on the end of one part, uh, NTSC frame. This one is unaltered and this one is then changed. So here we lose one frame one frame and a quarter frame so to say which in milliseconds is this starts by zero and then we have yeah 25 milliseconds so it's not that terrible but you lose one NTSC frame oh now it takes more now it takes us 30 milliseconds until we see the change so the thing about the split here, split works nice. Uh, you've seen the latency, it may be a bit higher, but the weight saving you have with it and the good quality you get from it are worth it for me. And easily turns this squad almost in a long range setup, in a long endurance flight. With an 1800 four cell battery, I got around seven minutes of gentle flying and that's really cool. And if you combine this with longer motor arms and higher efficiency motors, you get really nice flying times because this saved me 80 grams and 80 grams are a lot on such a good. Back to the run Eagle 2. The downsides, I would be so used to seeing the voltage on the OSD of the cam. On those installations where you want to go super easy and have no OSD on your copter or plane, but you have to see the voltage of your main battery. I mean, that's the most important thing. I don't understand why they didn't include it. They had it on their Swift 2. And uh, the competition, the Foxy cams, all the new Foxy cams have it. So please include OSD voltage in the next run cam, Eagle 3. But other than that, I think the image quality here, quality here is a bit better even on like on the Monster V2 from uh, Fox here. So image quality on the Eagle, very good. Features not totally fine, but but okay. Okay, I hope that's all. As I said, if you need more image comparisons, please just check out the other reviewers. They already did a lot. You can see my flying with the Shugong. I had a slight issue with one of these uh, immersion RC transmitters that they are not totally compatible with my what with my goggles with my DVR I had this uh, darker area in the sky and uh, light distortions um, not totally sure what's going on here but you see the point you see that the uh, Eagle 1 and Eagle 2 almost look like the same Eagle 2 is a, has a bit more sharpness Eagle 2 and Swift Mini is is quite notable noticeable I'd say it's almost like if you fly HD so Really, really cool. Definitely a recommendation. Just keep in mind you have no voltage display with this. Okay, thanks for watching. That's it. Uh, see you the next time. Uh, please try, if you're already a subscriber, please try that bell icon. I think if you don't have the notifications turned on, you can disappear or I can disappear off of your subscription or uh, subscription feed, which is terrible for me and also maybe for you. So hit the bell icon, comment, discuss cams in the comment section. I really love to answer uh, and, and participate with you in the, in the comment section about those cams and the tech stuff. And I'd like to help you guys. Yeah, thanks for watching, bye.
Thank you.